Uh, some of them are doing, I'm gonna use some of them, I'm a human, what I gotta do to get through you, I'm superhuman, in the in the realm, so anything you're saying, really saying, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm devastating, but they're demonstrating how I get the motherfuckers, all these feelings, like it's ever saying, in the I know, here's our friend, when he wants them, they take a step up, they're a brand, cause I know what they're getting motivated, I'm gonna get elevated music, I'm gonna get elevated music. Oh, he's too mainstream, well, that's what they do when they get jealous, they can use it. It's not hip hop, it's pop, cause I found a hell of way to fuse it. With rock, shock rap, with die, don't lose yourself, I make them lose it. Yes. What up though, Roddy Rod, big business, and it's time, playing catch up, another top 10 rap singles, yes it's time for Eminem, the rap guy himself, uh, you probably don't know this, even though I wear a Detroit shirt like every week on my channel, I am from Detroit, Michigan, and Eminem is one of my favorite rappers of all times, growing up he was my favorite rapper I have to say, because the simple fact that I let him slide on more shit than any rapper, any artist ever. Because sometimes the man does some corny shit, some cringy shit. But yeah, I never let an artist slide on some shit as he does. So that's how you know he's just a personal favorite of mine. And when dude was on point, dude was on fucking point. Alright? Without further ado, let's get into this, man. The man has 45 singles. So, to shave that down to 10, there are, there are some singles that I do like, really like, love, that didn't make it on this list, alright? You got songs like Mosh. I wanted Mosh to be honest. Honestly, it did initially, but I went through it again and said, nah, I actually really like that single. Uh, another one, 3 a.m. You know, like, just low key, not big big hits, but just cold songs. Stan is one that uh, people would probably probably be on the typical list. Uh, personally, I do respect the song and I enjoy the song. It's a beautiful song. It's a genius song, but the replay value is real low. It is a real boring song. Like you don't, it's not something that I just have on repeat. If I'm being honest, so that's why Stan is not making on, on my personal top ten. Eminem singles, but that doesn't take anything away from his brilliant. This doesn't take anything away from his geniusness, though. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this list. Coming in at number 10. Just gonna stand there and watch me burn. Now, Love the Way You Lie, it's a kind of a crazy song. I mean, it's crazy to think that when you really listen to the song, the lyrics, how Eminem, like, it's kind of like a pop, it's a pop song because Rihanna's on it, Alex the Kid produced it, but you listen to the lyrics, it is pure Eminem, like he can, <laughs> the fact that he threads that sem the last line of the song completely makes it Eminem, alright? And this is the song that, this is the song that has the rarity of actually being like a real hit as far as urban music goes. You know, Eminem is the biggest rapper alive. But a lot of his songs really don't get played on urban, at least not here. Okay, I'll say here. It doesn't get played on urban rap music, rap stations that much. This one is, was getting played a lot. I was really happy for it. I was happy to see him hop on other producers besides himself and Dr. Dre. I was really, really, really love the recovery album just for that simple fact. Seeing him rap on other producers. And the video was great. And, uh... And, yeah, this was, uh... A hell of a combination, and they even came back to the part two for Beyond's album, song written by Skylar Gray. Number 10, Love the Way You Lie. I have no snare in my headphones. So, Clean Out My Closet, another great song from another great Eminem album. I actually love the Eminem show. Uh, it's one of the few albums that did not disappoint that I have really high expectations for. This was. For me, I mean, the whole album in the show was really Eminem coming out and toning down the silliness and craziness and really just being legit with his messages. And this was different from song like Kill You and just all the other songs he made about his mom. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm gonna kill you, rape you, fuck you, bitch. Like, this was a sincere song about his feelings with his mom. He even, like, cut back on the super rhyme schemes to like the ray in like it was just straightforward and it was like initially it was it was like supposed to be like 
the lead single for uh, Eight Mile Soundtrack, but he came out with another one, of course. And that song will be laid on the list. And yeah, it's one of those songs. It's, I mean, he says himself he can't listen to it anymore, of course, obviously. But I feel like this is one of the chill ones compared to something like Kill You, like, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, but I still love the song. And it comes down number now on my top 10 Eminem singles. So, number eight. Yeah. I know. Mockingbird. I feel like this was a real continuation of Henley's song from Eminem's, Eminem's show. Uh, once again, Encore. I was pretty disappointed in the album. Okay. Now, this was actually a song I was disappointed with Encore. But there are actually some real good songs on here. And Mockingbird was one of them. All right, I'm really happy he decided to make a single. Once again, it's more of a straightforward, you know, Eminem cutting out, cutting out the silly bullshit. It just comes straight on the track telling you pouring himself onto the track. This was to his daughter Haley J. Uh, it's crazy thing how old the song is now. But uh, and he also addresses his uh, second daughter, I believe it was his niece, their daughter. I'm drawing a blank. I know he adopted one too, so this first time addressing uh, Elena and talking to Haley. I mean it's just for me it is a song, you know, he talks about Haley J a lot. And of course, Nice Summer by Your Class, a classic. But for me, this is the legit song. Mockingbird, heavy song. Like, I just like when he just cuts the bullshit and talks directly, directly to Heavy J. And then the video was fucking beautiful with all the slabs. Sharing a lot of his personal life in the video. So, number eight, love the song, Mockingbird. Number seven. Look, I was going to go easy on you, not to hurt your feelings. I'm yes, number seven, rap guy. Uh, initially, when I heard this song, I wasn't too, I was too geeked about it. The beat was weird. You know, he had that weird, uh, played out, looking boy shit in the middle. Like that shit was like already five years old. So what the hell are you doing that for? But over time, yes, the song just got better. But I mean, the fact that it it came uh, the most words and hits single. It makes that's that's a title that Eminem needs to have, you know. And it's one of those songs that you won't be happy to say as a rapper that you have as a single in the video. And uh, yeah, for Eminem, it's some um, it's just, uh, that far along in his, in his career, his seventh album over a decade in the game, them near a decade and a half. It's yeah, it's something that you want to do if, if you want to come back and rap and make another album, especially if Marshall Mathers LP two, then you want to have a single like that. And Rap God is, it's it's become something too over the years too, man. It really has. So number seven, Rap God. Number six, why is Guilty Conscious not on here? I just download the whole album. You gonna sit here telling me that Guilty Conscious? Why? What is going on, man? What, what, why is he trying to set me up like this? I just imported the entire album. Why wouldn't Guilty Conscience? Why the one song that I need? Troy, you better think of the consequence. Who are you? I'm your motherfucking conscience. That's Almost making it to my top five. Guilty Conscience. This was really the reason that I even bought the Slim Shade LP. Now, this was Eminem's first major labor. Major label, major label debut album. Uh, it was this, and pretty much, uh, it's my fault that made me and I said, 97 Biden Clap that made me say, Man, I'm gonna check this dude out, man. He's from Detroit, uh, he can rap, and these are some great concepts. Uh, I'm really happy he made this a single and the video and everything. The video actually. Has a chorus which make I even like like I like the video version more than the album version. This shit is hilarious. Just him playing devil's advocate, and you know off rip exactly where uh, he you get in with this guy. Uh, Dre did his thing. Dre plays his part great. M plays his part great. Um, and it's funny to see Dre, you know, rapping with somebody at that time. So it's great to see 
what Eminem could bring out of Dre that early in his career. And uh, it was a beat produced by Dre that, that to me didn't sound like your typical Dre beat too. So yeah, and it still stands as one of my favorite Eminem songs, one of my favorite songs of the Sim Shady LP. Number six, Guilty Conscious. So let's get into the top five. So coming in at number five is Being honest, I really liked this song when it first came out. It was real catchy. I was like, I felt like it was way better than my name is. I felt, oh yeah, yeah this this gonna be legit. Got the album. Well, I got the album. Uh, you know, it was my least like one of my least favorite songs. The album, not a song I would listen to all over again. But as time is going on and on, uh, I should like it more now than I did when I got the album. And when I go, I go back and listen to them, like, yeah, it was. It was a fucking genius song, man. The hook was real genius. It was real catchy. Uh, I'm really happy is he he found that this, like it made you seem it made it seem like M really had a knack for hooks with this one, cause that that was something that I just didn't expect. The hook was just something that was crazy, okay? And of course the lyrics, and of course the video is legendary, and the performances is legendary with the artist Tim Shady one of these. It's just a, a legendary uh, Eminem single, ain't you? I feel like he needs to perform it more. He's not a fan of his oldest shit, which is crazy. But uh, going back and listening to the song, like, yo, this is like top five. Top five in the singles for me. So let's get into number four. Coming out at number four, uh, I had to do it, man. Technically, this is a single. Uh, it does have a video for it. It came out with the uh, 8 Mile DVD. Uh, yeah, this is another, I think it's a rare song where this gets some radio play, man. I remember when it first came out, like the Eminem show, man, I had it in the tape deck for what, CD, in my CD drive for years, all right? I always went back to this album, and whenever I was riding along with somebody else who doesn't listen to Eminem, this is the song that. Nah, Eminem fans are like, yeah, put that shit on, it's, cause it's on some pimp shit, and it was still Eminem, like you know, it was still Eminem, you no, know, pit, I piss on the bitch, and like it, disrespectful Eminem, uh, and I still love the song. I love the song. That this is like, this is something that you can see Twister hopping on, busting rhymes, Jay Z. Like, he could have did a major remix for this if he wanted to. And it's produced by him. So, yeah, Eminem was just on the roll in 2002. He just was. Uh, and that's my number four favorite Eminem single. One of my favorite Eminem songs. Number three. Top three now. Coming on, come on number three. I remember when this song first came out. Actually, I got off Napster uh, <laughs> before the video came out. I was just waiting and waiting and waiting. Uh, waiting. My homeboy calling me when it came out. It, you know, this is before all the social media shit. Man, I, man, this shit blew my mind. Though. I played this shit. I got this on tape. I think I recorded it off the. No, I had Napster. I'm talking about. Uh, I got, like I said, I got off Napster, put it on the CD. I think it was just this song on the CD by itself. And maybe some I mean, Eminem shit. I was a big Eminem fan right there, right? I played shit over and over again. The video came out I loved. I said, yeah, this is the best single yet. Like, this is, you know, you want to go silly, this is the way to go. Because he's still being legit. You know, still thinking to it. Whereas, you know, I took a year off. Not really, because D12 album was pretty much his album, in my opinion. But this is me coming back to the world. And I know it's so empty without me. And the video was great. Uh, it's you no, know, I never skip one. This is the end of the show, like I said, about one of my favorite albums ever, and uh, it was a legit love song. He's still killing it, he's still rapping his ass off on the song. I legit love the song and this video, so I, I already knew number three was gonna be without me. Now, number one and two was uh, going through this whole list, number one and two was solidified. I already know what number one and two is gonna be, so number two and whatever. To the way I am by a mile, all right. Oh my god, when I first heard the Marshall Method LP, this was my favorite song of the first time this to it. It was just so original. Uh, 
you know, it was it was the original idea, the way he flowed on it. I, I mean, it's, it's like the fourth track, I mean, fourth song on the album. One, two, oh, it's like, damn, it's, yeah, the fourth song on the album, you know, seventh track. Man, I'll play this shit over and over again. I played Kid You a couple times, Stan loved it. Who knew? When I got to where I am, dog, I, I think I, I don't know how long. Tell me why I get past this song. And then when he performs it, uh, he, he throws in the, uh, with the, the sample, what I am is what I am, and what you, and all that shit. I really wish we had an album, or at least have like on his greatest hits. I really, I'm looking for that version that plays that sample in the background while the song is playing. Uh, the way I am, I, I couldn't believe he made a single in the video. The story goes that this and the real some shady like weren't on the album. It's gonna be a 12 song album. They made him go back in and say, I'm back. It wasn't a legit single. So they made him go back and make another single. And instead he made this. And before he made the real some shady. So I'm so glad that happened because this is it's the only uh, track on March Madness LP that he legit produced by himself. He got full credit for producing 100% by himself. And man, but my man, this is my favorite Eminem song for years. Uh, you know, until uh, Eminem show came out and I had new favorite Eminem songs, but it's still my favorite Eminem single for over two years. Until Number one, we all know what it is, man. Look, if you had one shot. All right, I'm trying to make this as short as possible. <laughs> you know, he has, it is great that Eminem, like being a rapper's rapper as he is, he has these singles. My name is Rose Machete, you know. Kind of song people claim as corny singles, pop songs, songs healing you like himself like that. It's just great to know that his biggest single ever is pure bars. Like, yes, the hook is catchy and the beat is just real anthem, like real rocky, like. But man, this is just the lyrics. So much rapping on this song. I, I was so happy with this song because. This was coming off of an Eminem show. And someone like Ty Collapse and Soldier, which kind of gave me the feeling as this. First time I heard it was actually just a, the 8 Mile, I guess it was a teaser trailer back then, but they playing snippets of it. So I missed it. Oh my God. I, I recorded it on my VHS back then. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I, can, I can't wait to actually hear the song, hear the song. And boy, it did not disappoint. All the anticipation I had for this song, and it did not disappoint. It was even better than I thought. I recorded this shit out of this video, and I memorized this. I listened to this song so many times, man. This is one of my favorite songs of all time. And it's my favorite Eminem single of all time. It's a lot of people's favorite Eminem I think it's so for me. It might, it might be more now with you know, the streaming and how they do sales now. It might be up to six, seven million, man. Uh, but I'm just so happy that this is his definitive single because it's also my favorite single. Number one in the single of all time, Lose Yourself. I still, this song still gets me pumped, all right? All right, so that's my list. Whew. Of Eminem singles, man. Um, whew. Let me know if you agree or disagree. I'm pretty sure some people are going to disagree. Most people will agree with my number one. I mean, I'm not the type of person that just agrees with everybody, you know, but yeah, lose yourself is hands down. It has to be my number one pick, all right? Next up, Nas top 10 singles. Uh, then after that, Tupac. Shit, I still got to do Kendrick and Jay Z. So, this is your first time watching the channel. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be here for all that. Okay? Thanks for watching. As always, big business. Don't forget to share this video. I holler.